Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Dean from RFP Tuning. Um, full disclosure, it's uh, 12.30 a.m., so I'm a little bit tired, but um, I wanted to make a video because a lot of you have been asking about the uh, uh, to bring back the self-tuning videos and so on. Um, there's a V8 bait um, spreadsheet floating around on how to disable limiters and how to tune yourself and stuff. I'm going to show you in practice how it actually works so you can tune it yourself. Um, everybody knows that um, uh, I post maps online and you can just use stage one that I'm gonna do right now use for my example but um, so let's get started uh, today we're gonna learn how to increase the boost in its effects on the map that you're working with um, so again stage one map is a good start for it if you want to use your own you can use your own you can download your uh, own map so uh, once you generate it with an MHD or read it off with CAS or whatever you're using to flash it, um, you put it into the folder that you want to use it. Uh, you open bin right here. You click File, Open Bin. So I'm going to open my, uh, let's say, 93 Octane. Open it. And then you need the X uh, definition file. So that's what you're going to open. Um, you're going to click XDF and then you're going to load up the XDF. So we're just going to use regular IIOS. Uh, all these are publicly posted so you can download them uh, and just use the download folder to open them up so first things first um, you need to disable limiters uh, if you're using the stock map if you're using my uh, stage one map which is a good start you don't need to disable anything um, in comparison so for example let's say you are uh, using your own map and you want to compare the changes to my um, um, to my maps right so you can just go here go to um, let's be stage one uh, 13 let's use 12 actually and uh, we're gonna open 93 octane bam so what you're gonna do here is uh, it's in comparison uh, so this is basically like your preload switch um, so you can pretty much load like up to four maps and compare against whatever your change is looking for um, anyway and you click right here and it's gonna compare changes since here's no changes you're not gonna see anything but if you say uh, load E85 map, for example, full E85 map. Uh, see, it's loaded up. Now, if we compare, for example, because fueling uh, is the biggest change there, uh, and ignition, you can see that the changes are occurring. So you can pretty much select Control C, click back here, Control V, and that's going to paste automatically uh, the new map for you. We're not going to do that because we have two different maps. And then you just click Save As, click your new name and save it that's pretty much it um, so anyway anyways uh, for PADs what I'm using is uh, pretty much stock PAD system I like stock it works fine um, what I do here is uh, I divide this table by two just like V V8 bit suggested it doesn't always like works like that I divide this table by two and divide it here what it does it uh, prevents the overshoot um, and the aggressive um, behavior from the DD factor if you leave it stock uh, for example, uh, that can create oscillation. So, uh, if you want things as smooth as here, so here's the boost target, and here's how the boost behavior is. Um, what it what it can do, it can actually create oscillation and create things like that. So it's just gonna pretty much go up and down for the boost. Um, this is uh, actually Pure Turbos. It's one of my customers. Um, so this this is the same exact PID I use for it. Uh, I do have lots of other PIDs that I can post online if you guys are interested you can check them out but they're mostly for different applications for different turbos uh, good reference point would be um, if we use the PIDs from 1M car it has actually a fantastic PID system um, so to do that you can just open the um, stock original bin which is IKM0S and open that XDF so usually you have to do this in two different um, two different windows uh, to get it working. So you can go to tools and then uh, custom tools and open this thing. Um, so here's a P factor. Here's a D factor. Uh, D factor again. I would reduce it just a little bit. Um, if you are in stock turbos, you can give it 20% reduction. To do that, you just do a factor of 1.2 uh, and then divide. That's going to give a 20% reduction. Uh, it's not going to behave as aggressive, but if you do a 200% reduction, which is a factor of two, uh, that's much better behavior. Again, the P factor here is pretty good. 
it's uh, it's mostly uh, it's mostly used for us um, using the wastegate duty base table rather than uh, having the uh, much aggressive boost control. So, um, and the other thing is you want to see is uh, airflow and ceiling. So, for the um, for the um, higher boost, you want to scale out the MAF, which is right here. It's a top table. You can go here into the breakpoints, uh, open the airflow right here, and you can scale it out. Um, usually, what I do is uh, I scale it up to about 370, and that should be fine. Uh, but and you also need the base table again. If you download these maps, um, I would I would use the stage two as a good starting point. They're very aggressive maps, and they're 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 good to learn from um, to see changes between like stage one and stage two. Um, so Where's the load? Here we go. Um, the BMWs are load-based tuning cars, so the target that they're using is a load-based. Um, and the thing we're going to look for today is how to turn up the boost and um, go from there. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, I posted uh, on my website uh, load reference uh, points for different um, um, for different PSI for different load. Uh, and here, this is MAF, since it's a system that uses the speed density, MAF is just calculated, so it's not actual MAF, and 54 does not have MAF table, or MAF sensor, I mean. Um, anyway, so uh, stock wastegate duty base table is good for the, um, pretty much, uh, stock boost, or uh, 2, 3 PSI over that. Um, in these maps, in stage one, I target about 15.5, 15.6, sometimes 16 psi. Um, the other thing is, should you look at is a boost ceiling table. Uh, this is 1.28. Uh, so basically, how this works: uh, 1.28 is your maximum uh, target that you can get uh, with the maximum load. Um, at this point, 220 would be 1.28 bar, which translates to roughly one. 18.6 psi. Uh, if you set this to let's say 1.5, which I usually do in my maps, uh, 185, which was previously uh, 16.5 psi, now becomes 17.3, 17.7 psi. Again, this will vary depending on your elevation where you're located at. Um, so this is what it does. It shifts. So now at 220 load, you're targeting 22.6 psi, which is M boost on MHD, whatever it's called, um, and you max out the uh, stock T map. That's how you do it. Let's say uh, you're having under boost. So two things you should see first is always give you the ceiling adder. This is basically how much resolution uh, PAD has, like how much PAD can influence um, the base table so how much you can go up or down uh, depending if you're over boosting or under boosting so I usually uh, raise this to 30 sometimes to 40 depending on uh, how much resolution I want to have the car uh, behave us uh, and for the um, for the airflow table how this works so you have a base plus application of PAD and then you have airflow adder that adds on top so let's say you're uh, we're going to take this for example. Let's say we're looking at the boost target. So this one has 3.5 bar. Uh, we're going to get to that. But uh, as you can see, load request is 178, but it's targeting 24.7. How that works, I'll explain that later. Anyway, uh, let's say we're under boosting. So here we're fine, but over here we're under boosting. And here we're under boosting like uh, 1.5, 1 psi, and so on. How to fix that? Well, we need to actually figure out where it's under boosting and see what is going on. Uh, this is called um, table tracing or cell tracing as uh, in LS world. Uh, you need ways to get you the base, you need PAD, and you need math. Again, this is calculated math, this is not real math. Uh, let's see, so we're, we're at 300 math, we're still under boosting, and then you can see that we're under boosting here. As you can see, the base table is 36 while the after PID is 40. So it means that um, if we look at the actual bank, so we're using 53% of the turbo, like that's how it works, bank one or bank two. Uh, but the calculation is off because it's adding the, um, adding the uh, wastegate duty in order to reach the target and still not doing that. Uh, so what we can do, reference the math and reference the base table 
and um, see where we need to add more WSGD duty. The way we can do it is, uh, let's see. So let's take, for example, this point right here. So we're under boosting 320 math, and we see that there's a separation of five points between base and after PID. So as you can see, it's not scaled out that far because this is stage one and this is completely different setup turbo. But for example, 322, uh, this is going to be uh, 322. We're going to read from 289 cell because everything up to the point of 333 is going to be referenced from this cell onwards. Uh, be careful. This is why you need to scale out things because you can create overboost and other issues. Or we can cheat the system and what we can do is we can scale this table out because here uh, again this is two different tunes two different setups but you get the point what we can do is since we have no point after 289 we straight jump to 333 but here we need to reference 320 322 we can create 322 through the airflow adder so you go to here you go to the adder and the way you want to do it is here so what I did, I copied everything from here. Control C, Control E. Well, you get the idea. I messed it up. But here we go. Control C, Control V. So I shifted it. And then now I add 320 table point reference. Now we're going to reopen uh, this airflow adder. Here we go. And now at 320. So be careful because this is going to shift everything backwards, but since the value was 111, it was such a small value, I see no point in having it. Um, but you can shift the whole table as well. I wouldn't do it. doesn't matter. As much, at least. Uh, so in here, we know that we're not reaching the peak duty at that point. So we need to add five points since there's a separation of five points. But five points might be too much, so you want to add four points. That's it. So now you're log and you should have higher duty there. Or you can do a point increase, which I like to do a lot. So let's say you want to multiply it by 10% in that table. So we didn't have the point reference, but let's say, uh, for example, we were in 333, right, cell. So what I would do here is, uh, this is the set point in bar over the, um, uh, over the uh, stock values, right, or over the... Um, uh, atmosphere. You can convert it to uh, PSI if you want. I have no reason to, but anyway, so 1.4 is roughly, what, 21 PSI-ish? Um, anyway, I like to select previous table, uh, I mean previous cell, and the future cell. So I go from 289 to 333. I select two cells like this, and I give it 10%. So this would be a factor of 1.10. So I select multiply, and multiply. So this only increased by like what 1.2, 1 1.3 uh, points. Um, so you can actually do this twice or three times. And now you see that it increased like that by five points. Again, five may be too much. It may overboost. It may not, depending on the temperature again, elevation, and so on. But anyway, so now that you know how to control the overshoot and undershoot, um, this is the dumb dumb version, really, but. Uh, we can just increase the boost. Uh, this is for stock turbos. So, for example, let's say we were targeting, I don't know, what is it, 178, 180, I'm targeting down there. Uh, what we do is basically increase it here by 10 or 15, and that increases the boost target. Now, to reach the boost target again, reference the base, reference the airflow, and that's it. Uh, I messed something up down here. Yep, I messed that up. Um, I wanted 12. Here we go. Bam, that's it. So, um, the other thing you should, you should look at, uh, if you use my maps, all these tables are going to be predefined and scaled out that way, uh, that you can make the increases without needing to modify these. But remember, when you're, um, when you're getting into higher load area, so let's say you were running 160 load, you were going to reference these tables a peak and then drop down here because this is rpm this is load again you need to always load uh, your load request and load actual here he's not logging load actual but i told him to do it later on here throttle and so on um and you can do the same cell tracing for the short fuel trim fuel trims and um, 
this is controlled by scalar, uh, which is right here. So scalars and the fuel bank one, bank two. Uh, if you have scalar that's negative, means that ECU is taking fuel out. That means you have too much fuel. You want to get these as close to zero as possible. Um, good rule of thumb, plus 10, minus 10. That's pretty much, uh, so you can control, correct, I mean, up to 32%. Um, you don't want to see that. You want to see about plus 10, minus 10. So 20% correction, maximum. Uh, incorrect, up 32 or down 32. Just bad practice, don't do that. Um, anyway, so you get these points as close as possible. Uh, these are V12 maps. I, yeah, these are, these are fine. They work fine, but they're not great. Um, and then AFR will vary from fuel um, to your timing to anything you want to use. Again, uh, stage one maps are good point to start. Stage two, or stage three, if you want to use those, a good point to start. So, this how you uh, this is how you increase the boost. Pretty much this. Uh, there's other variables like vanos and request offset and so on. There are actually playing in this, but um, the, the thing you want to look at is. If you're using the stock map, you gotta make sure that uh, where's the limiters? Jesus, here we go. Um, load limit. Ba, ba, ba. Here we go. You need boost limit multiplier. Uh, this is what you wanna look at. And load limit factor. Um, here, where is it at? Oh, here we go. Load limit factor. So think of it as a hundred percent. Think of it as a percentage of a load that you're going to target that's referenced in here, and think of this as a maximum boost target that you, or boost actually you're going to reach, and how close you're going to get to the boost target. Um, so since this is 2.9, you can actually set it to three. Uh, since the ceiling is boost, uh, bu 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 bu. so here's your controller for this table, right? So three is a maximum, where three means a representation of 185. Uh, where this is also also percentage so this is actual boost and this is the target percentage for the calculation so if you're for example over boosting you can actually lower this table the BLM so if you hear somebody saying BLM you can lower this table uh, and that will help you to control the boost without reducing the WizGit duty base or other things this is another way to control the boost um, I usually set this to 3 or to 2.9 that way load target uh, is always above the uh, load actual so you don't over boost or if you like to live dangerously you can set it to three and get the most out of the car that's that's what most people do anyway so this is the percentage for load target uh, BLM is a boost limit multiplier the boost actual that you're gonna reach and load actual you're gonna reach uh, load target is the load you're targeting the boost you're targeting so the load the car wants to reach uh, and yeah that's that is for now again um, Thanks, guys, for tuning in, and I'm going to post more of these, I guess.